story of the rest of the uh, beginning of the universe. God, spiritual matter, impact on material matter. Okay. Your question, where did God come from, assumes that you're thinking of the wrong, uh, obviously it displays that you're thinking of the wrong God, <laughs> because the God of the Bible d is not affected by time, space, or matter. If he's, if he's affected by time, space, or matter, he's not God. Time, space, and matter is what we call a continuum. All of them have to come into existence at the same instant, because if there were matter but no space, where would you put it? If there were matter and space but no time, when would you put it? You cannot have time, space, or matter independently. They have to come into existence simultaneously. The Bible answers that in ten words. In the beginning, there's time. God created the heaven, there's space, and the earth. There's matter. So you have time, space, matter created, a trinity of trinities there. Just, you know, time is past, present, future. Space has length, width, height. Matter has solid, liquid, gas. You have a trinity of trinities created instantaneously. And the God who created them has to be outside of them. If he's limited by time, he's not God. The guy who created the computer is not in the computer. He's not running around in there changing the numbers on the screen, okay? The God who created this universe is outside of the universe. He's above it, beyond it, in it, through it. He's, he's unaffected by it. So for... And the, the concept that a, of a spiritual uh, force cannot have any effect on a material body, well then, I guess you'd have to explain to me things like emotions and love and hatred and envy and jealousy and, and rationality. I mean, if your brain is just a random collection of chemicals that form by chance over billions of years, how on earth can you trust your own reasoning processes and the thoughts that you, you think?